Hi, I'm Bob. Let's solve the problems at the end of Chapter 3, the Multiple Regression Model, in the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a Modern Approach, the 7th edition, by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. We will complete the problems from number 1 to number 6 today. Here's the first problem. We regress the college GPA on the percentile in the high school graduating class and the SAT score. The first question is about the negative sign of the coefficient on the high school percentile. A small value of high school percentile means a higher position in the high school percentile, which implies a better performance in high school. A student who is good at her studies in high school tends to get a better GPA in college. So a higher GPA score is associated with a smaller percentile. For the second question, we plug the values into the estimated equation. The predicted value of the college GPA is 2.676. For the third question, the difference in predicted college GPA between the two students equals beta 2 hat times the difference in SAT scores. Student A is 0 0.207 points higher than student B. It is not a very large difference. For the fourth question, holding the high school percentile constant, the difference in college GPA comes from the difference in SAT scores. About 338 points difference in SAT scores leads to a predicted college GPA difference of 0 0.5. Let's do the second problem. We use the dataset wage 2 and run a multiple regression of education on the number of siblings, mother's education level and father's education level. For the first question, the estimated coefficient on the number of siblings is negative, suggesting that more brothers or sisters lead to fewer years of schooling. The more children sharing family resources, the less spending is on education for each child. The sign is expected. Holding parents' years of schooling fixed. One fewer year of schooling is associated with 10.64 more siblings. The second question. The estimated coefficient on the mother's years of schooling is 0 0.131 
he implies that one more year of the mother's schooling increases her child's schooling by 0.131 years on average. Holding the number of siblings, the father's years of schooling fixed. For the third question, holding the number of siblings fixed, the difference in the years of schooling comes from the difference in the parents' years of education. The predicted difference in years of schooling between A and B is 1.364 years. Let's go to the third problem. For question 1 and 2, if adults trade off sleep for work, more work implies less sleep. So the sign of beta 1 should be negative. The coefficient on education, beta 2, should be negative. A better educated person is more likely to study more and sleep less. The coefficient on age, beta 3, should be negative 2. We tend to sleep less when we grow up, especially when we get older. When I look at the estimates, I find that beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat have the size as expected, but beta 3 hat does not. However, beta 3 hat is not significantly different from zero at the 10% level. In this model, age has no significant effect on sleeping time. For the third question, if someone works five more hours per week, that is 300 minutes, the sleep time is predicted to fall by 44.5 minutes per week, that is about six minutes per night on average. It is not a large change off. For the fourth question, the estimated coefficient on education is minus 11.13. It implies that one more year of schooling leads to 11 minutes less sleep per week. It is about two minutes per night. It is a small effect. For the fifth question, the R squared is 0.113. It means 11.3% of the variation in sleeping time can be explained by the variation in the three explanatory variables. There are unobserved factors in the error term that affect sleeping time such as gender, race, marital status, occupation, and health. These variables are correlated with the total working time. For example, construction workers may work long hours and sleep less than other workers. The negative relationship between sleep and work might be due to the occupation. Health is another variable that affects sleeping time and is correlated with work hours. Less healthy workers tend to sleep more and work less. The estimated coefficient on total work time does not necessarily mean more work causes less sleep because it is not a ceteris paribus effect. In other words, there are omitted variables, and the zero conditional mean assumption is not satisfied. Let's go to the fourth problem. Five measured variables determine the median starting salary for new law school graduates. 
The first question is about the sine of beta five. It is negative because a small number of rankings means a better law school. Graduates from a better law school are expected to earn more. For the second question, I expect all the other four parameters to be positive. A higher median SAT and a higher median GPA imply a better quality of graduates, more volumes in the library, and the higher cost of attending school suggest a higher quality of the law school. All these factors contribute to a higher starting salary for graduates. For the third question, we run the regression model. The Satterer's Paribus difference in salary is twenty four point eight percent, with a median GPA difference of one point. Notice that when the outcome variable is in the log form and the explanatory variable is in the level form, the coefficient on the explanatory variable is the fraction of change in the outcome variable with respect to one unit change in the explanatory variable. To translate to a percentage, we multiply it by one hundred. A more precise percentage change can be calculated as follows. It is twenty eight point one percent. For the fourth question, when the outcome variable and explanatory variable are both in the log term, the coefficient indicates the percentage change of the outcome variable. With respect to a one percent change in the explanatory variable, so the median starting salary increases by zero point zero nine percent if the library volumes increase by one percent on average. In other words, the salary increases by nearly one percent, with a ten percent increase in the library volumes. Other things equal. For the last question, the medium starting salary rises by zero point thirty three percent if the law school ranks at one higher point. If the increase in ranking is twenty, the starting salary will rise by six point six percent on average. Holding other factors constant. The range of rankings is from one to one hundred seventy-five in the sample. It is better to attend a higher-ranked law school. Now let's complete the fifth problem. It is about a study relating college grade point average GPA. To time spent in various activities. The first question is about perfect collinearity. Since the sum of the four activities is a constant, the variable study is a linear function of the other three variables. It is impossible to change one variable while holding the other three fixed. The no perfect collinearity assumption states that there are no exact linear relationships among the explanatory variables. Here is the case that violates the assumption, because the four explanatory variables sum up to a constant. We can express any variable as a linear function of the other three. We should drop one explanatory variable from the model to avoid perfect collinearity. For example, we can drop 
Lisa, then the coefficients on the other three explanatory variables are interpreted as the change in GPA as that activity increases by one hour. The sixth problem. Consider the multiple regression model containing three independent variables. Suppose theta1 is the sum of the parameters on x1 and x2. The first question asks us to show that theta1 hat is an unbiased estimator of theta1. To show an estimator is unbiased, we need to show that the expectation of it conditional on x equals the true parameter. The expectation of theta1 hat is the sum of the expectations of beta1 hat and beta2 hat. Under the assumptions, beta1 hat and beta2 hat are unbiased estimators of beta 1 and beta 2. So, theta 1 hat is an unbiased estimator of theta 1. For the second question, we can compute the variance of theta 1 hat by writing out the variance of beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat. The covariance term is related to the correlation coefficient as follows. Finally, we can write the variance of theta 1 hat in terms of the variance of beta 1 hat, the variance of beta 2 hat, and the correlation coefficient between beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat. Thank you very much for solving the problems with me. See you. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.